Welcome to another episode of Teen Gen Talks, hosted by me, Melissa. And me, Desiree. Where the goal is to empower the youth of Glendale and connect youth to community resources, individuals, and organizations through interviews and discussions. And today we are joined by a special guest, John Paira. John is an award-winning author, artist, illustrator, and educator who's best known for his Latino-themed children's picture books. Don't forget to follow us on our socials on Instagram and Facebook at LAC. Don't forget to also listen to us on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel Glendale Library Arts and Culture where we post full videos every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, John, for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. We have a lot to discuss. Thank you. So to start off the interview, I want to take it back to when you first fell in love with art itself. Um, Did you have any early influences or was it just something you naturally gravitated towards? Um, Well, I mean, there were definitely early influences. Um, I would say one of the the biggest ones was my father. My father was an amateur artist who used to draw for my brothers and I when we were kids. And we used to get so excited to see him, you know, he, and he would tell stories like of his time when he was in the army or when he was young. And um, so they were really, as, as a kid, just seeing somebody draw was exciting. And, um, and also, you know, we used to, my mom would take us to the library and the art museum at a very early age and the natural history museum. And, and all those things were very creative. Um, to me, and I, I really got a lot of inspiration from it, especially at the at the library. And I would be, I remember checking out a lot of picture books and looking at the artwork in those books and getting really excited about it. Um, and just, it just seeing, you know, just seeing the visuals. Cause I'm a very visual person. I think visually language, mm, pretty good. <laughs> like, but like image wise, art wise pictures, I, I just gravitate toward that the most. So I think those were like probably the earliest influences that I had about, about art. And of course, movies and TV and things like that. <laughs> Do you remember specifically when you decided that you actually went to become an artist? Yes, I even remember where I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, it was actually a, a very important part of my life. And um, so what I was, I was actually, I was kind of older. Like I always loved doing art growing up and uh, I was always, you know, drawing and drawing and I was sort of the artist in the class. And then, um, you know, I kept doing, taking art classes and it wasn't until junior college, um, I was starting to think, you know, maybe I should start thinking about a career, you know, and what mm-hmm. I'm doing in my life, you know, is it going to be accounting or math or, or, you know, whatever it was that I was starting to think of. But in the meantime, I kept telling myself, in the meantime, I'm going to continue taking these art classes that I love so much. Um, because I had no frame of reference. I didn't know anybody who was a professional artist or a, um, you know, who did this for a living, you know, and the only idea you have sometimes of an artist is what you get from the movies, you know, it's like, and they seem pretty, pretty out there wild. And I, I'm kind of like a pretty normal, kind of middle of the road kind of person. And um, so, so what happened was um, a visiting illustrator artist came to my school and I, his name was Larry Carroll. And I, I knew his work and I saw it and just, I said, oh my gosh, you're the person who did this album cover or you did this and, and, and you're also a fine artist. And, and, and just, it was just this electricity that I felt like I had never felt before. And, and from that moment, um, you know, we, after the introduction, my teacher, you know, obviously wanted me to continue with art. So he kind of like connected us uh, even further. So he actually became my mentor for about a year and a half and um, to get my portfolio ready to go to art school because I didn't have any money. I was working for my father and we were kind of a, you know, we we're at that time, we didn't have a lot. And it was, um, I was working, I was going to school and, and, you know, it just didn't seem like a feasible thing to, to do. And so, so, but when I, when he became my mentor, I remember standing in his living room and he said okay John we're going to start working on your portfolio we're going to start getting you ready to get a scholarship the whole goal was to get a scholarship to go to art school but I remember when he said it like to me I remember thinking this is this is more than just art school this is this Mm -hmm. is going to be the road for the rest of my life this is and I remember just standing there thinking that to myself 
this is it. This is my, this is the decision I'm making and I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. So that was, that was a while ago. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I just kind of stuck down that path ever since, you know, thankfully those guys were amazing teachers and, and mentors and yeah. So that, and that's also, also why I like to, go to schools and do school visits and, and talk to, you know, and, and do interviews and, and talk with young people and, and, and older people at all ages. Cause I want, I want to see, you know, I want to tell them, you know, what's possible. It's like, if you have ideas and, and what you think about and, and, and give them those ideas, like I had that idea of, of following that dream and those paths. So I, if I can do that for somebody that would, that's kind of like how I, how I see it now. Yeah. So you are best known for your Latino themed children's picture books. What visual influences inspired you when you were growing up that then translated into your books? Well, I mean, a lot of the visuals uh, growing up where there was um, artists that we, you know, we had pictures in our, and that we were familiar with artists that were familiar with Mexico, Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera, um, Siqueiros, um, Orozco. I mean, a lot of the mural artists, especially from Mexico, because they were, they were pretty well known. Um, but also a lot of the folk art. I mean, you think of like uh, Mexico is very, you know, especially in, in Mexico, you see the, a lot of the, the, the masks that you see, the carvings. Um, it's a very creative, um, you know, country and a lot of art comes from there. So, you know, we see a lot of that, we saw a lot of that, experienced a lot of that growing up. Um, also, you know, I'm also influenced by music and dance mm-hmm. and poetry and books and reading. And so those are also things that, will inspire your creativity and I think get you, you know, just just kind of like in a creative mindset to think about things and and how to to do art. And, and it, it's it's sort of the influence each other. So it's more than just maybe a picture or a painter or an artist. There's there are many levels to it. So how has the journey been in the world of children's publishing for you, been for you? Uh, well it's been very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, no, I mean, I started doing children's publishing about, okay, I've been a professional illustrator for about 25, 25 years. And then I started doing children's books around 2004 and I had no idea what I was doing. I was kind of a, still a struggling artist trying to make my way and I moved to New York and I was trying to get work. And then somebody, you know, cause my, my work has, you know, it's very colorful sort of family kids in the picture oriented type work. And, and so then a small publisher saw it and they said, um, if I'd be interested, and that was for uh, Lunar Rising Publishing. And then they said, uh, we have this story, would you, would you consider it? And I, and I said, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I need, <laughs> needed the job. And, uh, and it was a great story. And it was written by Monica Brown, who's, who's a wonderful author, an extremely talented, wonderful author. And she's written many, many award-winning books and very successful. But at the time, we were both sort of starting out. And um, so I worked on it. The book was called My Name is Gabriela. And it has to do with a, a poet, a real life person. Her name was Gabriela Mistral. She was a poet from Chile who was one of the first person to win the Nobel Prize for Literature for her poetry in Latin America. And uh, so that's, it was very inspiring. And I really liked it because it kind of, um, I mean, I I, I like that I could work on projects that I myself as an adult can enjoy, but also children can enjoy. You know, there's that sort of balance you're always trying to work when you're working on a children's book. I want it to be as interesting for the adults as it is for the kids, you know, and mixing those two things together. Because a lot of times it's the parents who buy the books and read it to the kids. And I want to make sure it's, in, you know, that they're in having fun as well. And so, so I, a lot of the books I work on are biographies and um, which, is, which is fun. And, um, but it's, so, so that's, that was my first book. So the first three books I did um, I thought I was just turning in illustration assignments, you know, because uh, that's kind of what I was used to doing as an illustrator. Not knowing that, that there's this big world of librarians and book owners and book lovers and, and, and organizations that support children's books. And it was kind of like a, a big revelation. It wasn't until uh, I think 2010, I, I won two big awards uh, from two different literary organizations. One from one was from the American Library Association, 
And we went, my wife and I went down to Washington, D.C. And um, I, mean, I remember it was like, we're, it was a beautiful day. We're walking down, we're, we're, going, we're going to the place. And it's like, yeah, we have the dress right here. And I'm looking at it. And, and then I see just thousands of people just walking to this one place. I'm just like, oh, what's, what's going on here? There must be some event going on. And then my wife turns to me and she says, John, I, I think that's where we're going. And then it kind of hit me. I'm like, uh-oh. You know, I was like, what, <laughs> what have I gotten into? <laughs> It got a little like, oh wow, this is this is bigger than I thought it was. And ever since then, it's been it's been so fun and so exciting. And I feel like I found your tri- you know you find your tribe in life. You know, like mm-hmm. your people. And it just feels felt. It feels like that, like people that I, because I I'm not only a, a children's book illustrator, but I get, I'm also a fan, and I love to meet other writers and illustrators and artists and creative people and even people that are editors or 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 directors or whatever they are that are a part of that journey of making a children's books I find it fascinating which is really interesting and um, so I'm, I'm just really lucky to be to be a part of that yeah so and when working with other art authors on illustrating their stories and making their stories come to life how do you approach each project and what is something that you have learned from working with different authors um well working with different authors is is really interesting one of the misconceptions people have is I don't work with authors I work with their stories and Mm -hmm. so what happens is an author will sell the story to a publisher and then I work with the editor or art director at the publisher. I don't even talk to the, the author. They don't even want you to talk to the author. It's really interesting until like afterwards. And um, so I'm, I'm working, I read the story. If I start reading the story and, and pictures start like kind of like appearing in my head, you know, when you read a book and you have your own idea of what it is inside your head, yeah. that's if it really becomes strong to me, um, those images that I know that, oh, this is a good one. This is a good story. And I want to work on this story. So that's kind of like the first step. Um, and then the second step that you, when I accept the project is, um, is the research. It, it, there's a lot of research, a lot of homework that goes into it. Uh, a lot of the books I work on um, are biographies and I want to make sure that uh, they're done correctly. You know, I can, have some artistic license with it but I really want if somebody like if somebody knew that person in the book I want them to be able to pick up the book and say yes this feels right this this is this feels like them I don't want to I don't want to feel like you know I'm making stuff up and there's a whole list of things I'll go through um, as I mentioned earlier I'll, I'll look at you know photos pictures uh, I'll look at where they lived what's the, uh, the geography the climate what kind of food they eat uh, the music that they have, well, the clothes, obviously, that they dress in, um, the plants. I, I'm very, I like all the details that relate to the story that may not even show up in the story, but I just want to be influenced. Uh, other artists, regional artists from that area, um, I'll look at those people because a lot of folk artists, especially from, from an area, will sort of indicate um, or refer to the the project I'm working on. And I like that. I like those those little those little nice little things. And then so from that I work on the sketches. Uh, and then once the sketches are approved, I go to painting. Um, and I kind of work in a bit of a half painting, half computer now. And and then I turn everything in and then they they put the book together. So that's you know how it is. And then maybe afterwards you get to meet the, the you know. <laughs> There was one author I didn't I didn't get to meet for like for like years, you know, wow. Texas somewhere on a on a book festival. Funny that. <laughs> funny, it's fun. It's it's a it's so much um, fun, and I, I it's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm so grateful to get to work on it. <laughs> What's like your normal time frame for um you know once you accept that you want to be the illustrator to the end goal or? Uh, it takes a while. Um, usually when I ask this, the kids in school, they're really funny because they say, I go, how long does it take me to do one picture book, you think? And they raise their hands, they go, one hour, one week, one month, you know, like, well, actually it takes me about six to eight months, you know? So if you're starting the third grade, you know, by the time like you finish, this is like one book for me. <laughs> so I get really, you know, I have to 
tell them, you know, that art takes time sometimes and that it's a process, but that it's okay, you know, and because um, we also talk about, you know, um, sometimes it can be overwhelming to work on big projects, um, especially if something as long as a children's book, but that uh, if you cut it up in pieces and you do one step at a time, one step at a time, and it, it's easier and you just want accomplish one goal, you know, and then, you know, you move on to the next one. And that's kind of like the whole, the whole key to it, you know, is, is sort of scheduling it out. Um, in your interview with Publishers Weekly, you mentioned how when attending Moore Park Community College, you started to doubt yourself and wondered, what are you doing with your life? Um, how did you get over that hurdle of self-doubt? And how did you, um, yeah, how did you overcome that? Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, it, it was, it was, I was young. I mean, you know, it, it was, again, I didn't know I was going to be what I'm doing today. I didn't know. I just knew that I liked art. And I, again, I just wanted to see. And if it wasn't for you know, the visiting artists coming in and kind of giving me directions and having a mentor or having teachers that sort of looked out for me. It was, it was a scary time, you know, because you don't know. And it was really important to me that I wanted to do something like that I felt fulfilled, that I had a purpose like in life kind of a thing. Um, and, you know, and you don't know what's gonna happen, especially when you're just starting out. Uh, I think if I have any success at this, it's just that persistence, you know, not everything you do, even things that you like are going to work out. And, but that's okay. You know, you sort of learn from them and you kind of make adjustments and you go, okay, that didn't work. What about this way? And so now it's like, it just, it's just become more, um, you know, second nature. You just go, okay, that didn't work as, as well as I thought, or, you know, it, it worked pretty good, but not as quite. And then you sort of refocus, you know, back up a little bit and then go in this direction and see how that works. So whether if so, if I had self doubt about it, I, I was very fortunate to just it, I didn't let it keep me down for too long. You know, and believe me, there were setbacks along the way of like, you know, John, like even when I, I, I applied to art school, the first two times I was told mm, your portfolio is not that good. And even in art school, I wasn't the best art student. I wasn't the best art student. There were other students that were better than me. And you have to kind of keep that in mind. It's not a, it's not a race. It's not a competition with others. It's a competition with yourself to do the best that you can do and to be the best that you can be. And then eventually uh, people will start to see that. And I think uh, that's, that's, I think, the, the important to remember you know, when, you're, when you're working in this field. What is a piece of advice that you would give aspiring artists, authors, and illustrators? Uh, I would say, um, again, hone your craft. Know, really work hard at being, you know, being, knowing your materials, working really good. I had a teacher once tell me that, uh, know the rules so you can break the rules, which I, I think is a Picasso quote, but uh, he sort of always loved to say it in class. He said, so learn all the rules so you can break them. Um, there was a point in my career where and it was happened at one of my at, at the very end of art school. And what happens is I, I knew everything I, I or as much as I wanted to learn about the craft of making art. But I then I had to ask myself, what kind of art do I want to make? You know, like, do I want to be realism? Do I want to be this? Do I want to be that? And that's a question for young artists. You will come, what kind of art do you want to make eventually? You know, who is it that you really like? What's, is there a style? Is there a thing that's passionate about? Um, you know, I love my background. I love my family, my, especially, you know, a lot of the Latino roots that I, I kind of grew up with um, in my family and which was food, music, you know, the, the costumes, the dress, the art, everything, which also influenced, and, and then take all of those things that you care about um, and make it, and make it, put it into your art. And then you'll feel so alive when you're working on art. And, th and that was like a game changer for me. And it also, this happened after a conversation I had with a, a fine artist from East of Los Angeles, uh, Salman Huerta. And, um, and so he was, we were talking about his presentation uh, and what influenced him. And, and so that's how I got the idea. And so from that moment on, it was just like, you know, that was where my direction was. Going. But I was a little aimless before, before that, that moment. So again, if you're a young artist, 
think about the things you care about the most and how maybe that could relate to your art and, 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 and what you do. I also want to talk about your collaboration with the United States Postal Service's stamp program in which they issued a set of Delicioso Forever stamps devoted to Latin cuisine. And you created six amazing stamps that represented the Latin cuisine really well. Um, how did the opportunity arise and what was it like working on a project like that? Oh my God, it was a dream come true. It was fascinating. It was like, like I, I had dreamed that, you know, like one day I would do a, a stamp, let alone six. It's, it was uh, a lot of fun. Um, the choice, I, I didn't reach out to them. They actually reached out to me. It was really, it, it's sort of an interesting story. So the selection for stamps starts with a committee, uh, with the Postal Service Committee. And it's sort of a group of members that are sort of, you know, representative of the United States, I guess. And they, they come in and they, they decide for the, in the coming years, what stamps will be selected and what the themes will be. And they get 50,000 suggestions every single year for, for what things could be. And a lot of the stamp uh, themes are already kind of in place, you know, the holiday stamps, the things like this are kind of things. So there's not much room for other, you know, kind of creative uh, things. So I was lucky enough, they, they, they want to do something about Latino food and, and things like this. And I think they seen probably some of my children's books, um, which had, you know, some probably food in it, of course, and, uh, <laughs> which I love. And uh, uh, so, so they offered me, you know, actually was, they first offered me five stamps and they said, well, and they had a whole list of uh, food ideas. And we talked about the list and they had all these, you know, marketing people come in and it's like, well, this is the list and this is what we're kind of going with. And, and, you know, which ones you think will be visually interesting to illustrate. And we got to make sure it's sort of pan Latin American countries. And then, so we, we started working on them. We had, we, we picked the five stamps and then uh, we were working on those. And then I said, you know what, it's, um, it's too bad. You really, you really need a dessert in this group, you know? And I, I think you should pick flan. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, how could you have this, this wonderful meal? You know? Like, cause I'm thinking of it like as a, you know, as, 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 a, as an artist, but as a food lover too, you know, it's like, you have to, <laughs> you, you know, you have to enjoy this meal, but at the end of the meal, especially when you're eating like Latino food, Mexican food or something, you know, a little flan, you know, come on, you know? <laughs> And uh, so they said, yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Let me get that. You know, so they came, um, uh, so they said, so they gave me the green light, you know, they came back, they love it, go for it, you know? And that's actually one of the, the most uh, the most requested stamp. And that's like, people, like I got letters and, and, and emails saying, oh, I only use the flan stuff for my special friends or for, for you know, this is really funny. So it doesn't, doesn't but it's, it's like, it really worked out good. I'm so glad that, uh, you know, in that moment, we, we had that discussion and, and it came up. So it's like, but again, and, and then when the, the stamps came out, we had a big celebration in New Mexico. We went to, there was, um, they have a, 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 a Mexican museum um, cultural center in New Mexico. And they, you know, had people from the state and the, the whole auditorium was filled and the newspapers and film TV crew, crew were there and all that stuff. And, you know, we did re reports and I think it was in almost every newspaper in the country um, did an article about it through AP. And um, it just, it was I, unbelievably wonderful. And I was so grateful to be a part of it. And, you know, it's, and, and working with that team, you know, from, from the, the art directors were, were so special and great and they made it so much fun. And, uh, and then they take the original art and the original art actually goes to, there's a post office Smithsonian in Washington, DC. Um, so now the art is at the Smithsonian Washington, DC. Fun, it's, it's just a great, it's a great feeling. I mean, you know, so, so fun, fun journeys. <laughs> So you have also served as an instructor at the Carnage Art Museum and have done illustrated workshop. What is, what is it about teaching that you enjoy and what has it taught you? Well, I mean, after all these years, of course, it's like you, you get a lot of ideas and you, you kind of know the roads and, and all that information is sort of just kind of stored up here. So I like giving, A, I love giving back. I love talking to, you know, students and people, young and old, you know, I love 
interacting with them and showing them, you know, what's possible, but through their own voice. I'm not, I don't want to project my voice onto them and, and then have it do it my way. I want them to kind of find their voice and lift that up. And if I can find that, you know, and, you know, and talk about the nuts and bolts. Sometimes it's a work, you know, it's a painting workshop. Sometimes it's about drawing, but sometimes it's just about, you know, seeing what they're working on and, and, and saying, what about, have you thought about this? And, and what about these ideas? And I, and I'm trying to give them direction. Um, my mom was a school teacher also for 35 years. So I, I probably had that background and I used to go to her with many of her classes when she was young and she, she loved to be very creative. She did a lot of plays at her school um, with the kids. They did a lot of poetry. I, I still remember the poems that they, they would be reading in her the class. And, and she even taught in Glendale. She even taught them. Oh, uh, Calabasas, Glendale, uh, Westlake. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other places. Yeah, she used to teach. In, in, awesome. you know, that was, um, you know, many years ago, but... Uh, <laughs> That's, she was very passionate. So again, from, I kind of would cut the best for my, my parents. My father was, was the artist. My mother was into, you know, the books and the, and the creativity. Well, both of them were creative. So, I mean, it really helps. Again, I just like, I like, you know, that other people will find their path and they'll find their journey and find something about themselves. If I, and if I can help it, I'm just giving the, you know, like if somebody, it's like, sort of like, I used to get really nervous about giving speeches in front of large audience, but then I realized, you know what, John, it's just like, if somebody asked you for directions, how to get to the highway over here, you would just go, you wouldn't get nervous. You would just tell them, you just have to go this way, this way, this way. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I feel a little bit like I'm doing. I'm just, I'm giving the instructions as best as I can so that they could reach the goal themselves. And I think that's like part of the journey for them. And I, it's very fulfilling, I guess, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have received many awards and recognitions over the years, have done various projects and done many artistic avenues. For you, what does all of this mean to you, especially being Latina? Um, I mean, it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's great to be recognized by your, your peers and it's wonderful to, be, to, see, to see that all the hard work that you've invested in uh, kind of come to fruition. And because there was a time at the beginning of my career where people looked at my portfolio and they said, this is Latino art. It's like a Southwestern art type mm -hmm. of thing. They didn't really know what to make of it, if, you know, but I knew, I knew, I said, look, I know this, this country is changing. There's things going on and whether demographics or, or just, you know, socially, I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in a place where this is going to be important one day. And I just kind of kept my head down and I, just wanted to work hard and keep at it and keep at it and you know and then it it didn't happen overnight what was what's the, the what is the um the saying it's like it took me 20 years to become an overnight success mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's it was really like that but I knew that if I this was important to me and I thought it and I felt that it was important to others as well and I thought that it could be really fun and interesting and so I think that's the most satisfying thing about it. Yeah. You know, and my aunts and my uncles and my cousins, they all love it. They just, they get so, <laughs> I see it. Uh, they feel like proud. It's like, it's like you know, uh, mijo, you know, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> So before we end, we have some rapid fire questions. The first question is, what is your favorite color? Green. When are you the happiest? There's five things that make me happy. Family, food, music, art, and traveling. Knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Boy, uh, you're in for some bumpy roads, but it'll be worth it at the end. If you could have three people dead or alive for dinner guests, who would they be? Oh, that's a tough one. Well, uh, Frida Kahlo would be uh, one of them for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody contemporary. Uh, I would love to see my old mentor again, uh, Larry. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago. And um, th that would have been nice to say one last time, just to tell him, you know, I made it, I did it, you know, we did it. Um, the last one I would say, I want to say like a, a writer or somebody. Um, Gosh, who, who could I pick? It, it, it'll probably come to me later. I can't think of anybody. 
Um, what is the song that you have on repeat currently? Gosh, I want to I want to think of something good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I have different playlists, so it's hard to say. Sometimes when I want to just I have like a travel playlist. I have a kind of a rock out playlist. I, I have guitars and I used to play in bands. I used to play in LA all the time. We used to play at the Roxy and the Whiskey. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, it's it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'll be I'm actually going to be in May. I, I'm coming back to Southern California for a book tour. So in case uh, anybody's available, I'll be at Skylight Books in um, just nearby you guys uh, for a book signing on May 29th. Anyway, I'm getting off the subject. <laughs> I it's too much. I, I don't even know where to begin on my playlist. It depends about the songs. How about what do you want your legacy to be? Um. I think just that people enjoy the books. I, you know, like somebody um, asked me, John, are you famous now? Not, you know, like a, a, an old school friend. And I said, you know, it's not, it's not something I, I think about really. I, and I, I don't personally want to be famous. Uh, <laughs> I want my art to be, I want people to enjoy the art. I want my art to be out there and for people to say, hey, this is a great book, you know, or, and recommend it and, and read it and, or be inspired by the art. And maybe that'll inspire more artists or more creative people, or whether it's writers or poets or storytellers or whatever it is. Uh, I just want people to be a part of that, you know. What is your favorite movie? <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, my favorite movie, uh, well, there's several favorite movies. There's one, um, as far as comedies go, I really like Nacho Libre a lot. I've seen that a million times, especially with our, you know, with my nieces and nephews and granddaughters. So we, we have a lot of fun with that one. Um, uh, and there's some funny other uh, family stories around that. But um, so Nacho Libre comedies, um, I'm trying to think of other really wonderful. I love a lot of um, the new animation uh, work that's been done. Maya and the Three. I don't know. There's a new Netflix series called Maya and the Three um, by Jorge Gutierrez and his wife uh, Sandra. Um, they're incredible um, artists, and, and so I love what they're doing with the with the work. Um, taking Latino idea, you know, storytelling and giving it to a new generation. I think that's fascinating. Um, um, other TV movies, uh, I like old, old TV shows, old movies a lot, because I, I my dad used to love old movies. Um, a lot of things, just comedies, fun, fun stuff, happy stuff, all documentaries, you know, just, it just depends. Um, I also like uh, detective shows. <laughs> <laughs> What is a book that you have recently read or are currently reading that you would recommend? Uh, I had to put this list together because it was a <laughs> actually. Um, well, I'm reading two books on bi biographies about comedians right now simultaneously. I'm reading one about Jay Leno and one about Jimmy Carr. Um, because sort of like, uh, it's, it's interesting because like the, the sort of the, the journey to get to where they wanted to get to is similar to an artist, you know. Well, I mean, because they are artists, you know, like, people who do their, you know, whether an actor or a writer, it's a very similar journey. And they're, and you, you kind of learn from other people's stories about, oh, that's how they, you know, got there. And again, it always reminds me of my journey about persistence. If you want to be, if you want to get somewhere, sometimes not necessarily you have to be the best at it. You just have to be the best you can be at you and being persistent. It's just that it takes time sometimes. Uh, so those two biographies, um, I also, a couple of children's books, uh, Gustavo and the Shy Ghost um, by Flavia Drago, um, Mercy Suarez Can't Dance by Meg Medina, On the Road with Jack Kerouac, um, The Runaway Species, How Human Creativity Remakes the World, How Human Creativity Remakes the World by David I Eagleman and Anthony Brandt, uh, and Angel Thieves by uh, Kathy Pelt. Um, so yeah, so... Those are the books I've read this year. And um, yeah, I, I love reading. I, I, I try to get as much as I can. So, and also um, I, if, I, if I can, I, I have a new book coming out. It's called Growing an Artist. Um, and it's, a, I, it's one I wrote. So this is kind of a, a very special book and it's coming out next month. And this is kind of like the book tour that I'll be in Southern California for. And I wrote it and it's about my father who was a landscaper contractor. And that's me as a little boy and it's called Growing an Artist. So I'm the little boy in the story. And it's really, it's 
it means the world to me, the story. And um, I really work a lot on it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, like a, it, this has kind of come full circle now because now it's, I'm the writer and it's about, I'm really taking everything that I've learned about art and about storytelling and about books and about my family and my background and my culture and everything. And I've really this story you know and, and I, I wanted to, of course make it is inter, inter, it had to be interesting and entertaining for for readers I didn't want it to be you know too you know, self you know <laughs> yeah I wanted to be like a story like a really scary movie but it's it's an, an important story I think because it talks about some of the things we're discussing you know today about how being creative and those paths that you choose and how to feed your creativity and how to work at something and, and and you know it comes early on in life sometimes but you can find it you know no matter what age you are you can find that path and just continue down it and have this and have fun with it because you got to be you have to be in that moment you, you know don't live for what's going to happen next year oh, i'll be happy next year when I, this happens i'll be happy you know this no just you enjoy the journey that's the whole thing you know you can't because you don't always can predict what's going to happen. You can work at it, you can plan at something, but in the end, there are it'll just sort of organically kind of take a life on its own, and you kind of have to follow it sometimes. Um, but it's just the day to day journey, and you have to enjoy. It. And I think that's important to remember. Well, thank you so much, John. We learned a lot about you. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to sit down with us and talk. Can you let everyone at home know about any upcoming projects and where they could connect with you? Um, well, again, it just if you want to visit my website, it's johnparart.com. Um, again, my, my new book that's coming out, uh, Growing an Artist, it's also going to be available in Spanish too. So if um, Latino uh, readers out there uh, can grab it. And uh, again, I'll be doing um, book signings here in, on the East Coast in New York, um, but also in Southern California, in San Diego, Los Angeles, and then Thousand Oaks. So hopefully I will see you there. You can see the dates on my website and I'll post more things online in media uh, pretty soon. So those are the things I'm working on. I'm also working, just finishing up another book that has to do with a Spanish spelling bee. Um, <laughs> really kind of interesting because you don't, you don't know, like there's a national, you know, like national, spelling bee you don't hear that much of these stories so i love stories that that kind of celebrate these sort of uh like i know hero kids and, and just mm -hmm. it's such a fun thing to be and it's also about family and um and that was written by michael genhart and that's going to be on holiday house coming out next year and and then i have something oh i something for the fall uh for christmas time i can't say who it is yet because i'm not supposed to but it's for a big uh major uh outlet store and so just look for some christmas uh, swag coming out there um, okay. this fall, so. um, yeah. awesome well, yay. Thank, thank you again so much we appreciated this so much and loved getting to know you and all that so thank you so much all right well thank you guys all the best <laughs>